On today's episode of The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, we're going to take a first look at On One Photo Raw 2023. There's a lot of exciting new additions to this piece of software. We're going to look at them today. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Well, On One Photo Raw 2023 is out. I'm going to take a first look at it today. This is a really nice new product, okay? So we're going to look at some of its uh, new features. Not all of its new features, but some of the new features, and I think you're going to like it. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, but... It really has come a long, long way, and it will only get better, so let's take a look at it. Oh, and by the way, you could get a free trial of this software to try it out for yourself. You can just click on my affiliate link in the description below this video. It'll take you to the On One website, and if you decide you want to purchase it, you can use my promo code David Kelly and save 20% off your purchase. When you do that, you're helping support the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I thank you. I'm starting out in the library module now. They have a really nice file management system, and it's been good for quite a while now, but they've added the new keyword AI. Now, I think I'm going to devote an entire video to that. I'll touch on it briefly here. I don't know about you, but I've never been really good at placing keywords on my images. You know, it's a great thing to do, but I just never seem to take the time to do it. But now with Keyword AI, the software does it for you, and that is quite amazing. I'm going to go ahead and open up my preferences. I'm just coming up here to the menu bar and clicking right here. I'm working on a Mac. It's probably different on Windows, but you know how to find your preferences on a Windows machine. But come to Preferences, and you're going to notice, you see here, Keyword AI? Click on that, and... You can scan your catalog folders with Keyword AI, which is really nice. And you could tell it what all you want it to find, like photographic properties, find faces and photos, so on and so forth, all that stuff. I set mine up to do that. It takes a while to scan all your images. I have a lot of images, so it's been doing this now, I have to say, for at least two days. And it's not done yet, so it takes some time to do it. But it works in the background. But once it's done, it's going to have all your images keyworded. And that is really cool. I'm just going to go ahead and click cancel for now. But let me show you how this keyword AI works. I'm going to click on this first image. You see over here on the right side in this pane over here, metadata. If it's not open, just click on it. And you'll notice down here, AI keywords, scan, add all. But I'm just going to scan this one image. And give it a second. And down here below, see it says scan job. This is on ScanJob 4. I've done three other scans before this, but give it a second here. It's not done yet. It says this is a low-key image. It's vivid, and it's also a flowering plant, and it has color. Now, what you can do is click Add All, and it'll put these keywords up in here, or you could choose the ones you want. In other words, if I want color, I can click Color, and you notice color goes up there, or Flowering Plant, Vivid. And I don't think I'd put low key on here. I just underexposed that image a little bit. So I wouldn't put low key, but there they are. Or you could click add all and they all go up in there. So now that's keyworded. But as I said, anything you put inside of a catalog and you could choose what you want to be in your catalog. I just put my whole picture library inside of a catalog and it's uh, going through and analyzing each and every photograph of the thousands upon thousands of photographs so it does take some time but once it's done and then you can just come here to search and search for you know like butterfly horse whatever you want so i think that's going to be great it's really going to help me out when i'm trying to find images it'll take the disorganized dave and turn me into the organized dave all right, they've just added Tax Sharp AI. So let's look at that. So this image right here is a raw file. So let me come and click on edit. And now, you know, I could run auto AI on this. And this is something cool. And this was in the last version of On One Photo Raw 2022. Let me click on auto AI and it'll automatically adjust my image for me. Now, you don't have to accept that just the way it is. This is something cool. Watch all these sliders when I take this auto adjustment and pull back on it. Watch how all those sliders move in tandem at different increments, even the whole way down here into saturation and vibrance. 
notice that. Isn't that cool? So if you felt that was too aggressive, you can ease back on it. And then you could come here and, you know, I may want to lighten up the midtones a little bit more, maybe open up the shadows just a little bit, and maybe add a little bit more vibrance. And then I could come and work with my temperature and tint, you know, all the normal things you do when you're editing a raw file. Here's a little tip for you on slider adjustments. If you click on the circle, you notice how it turns white, then you could use your scroll wheel on your mouse and scroll more fluidly through here. In other words, if you really wanted to make a fast adjustment, you could scroll through, or you could do your typical drag, drag to the left, drag to the right. But I think that's pretty interesting and i just discovered that by accident the other day so i wanted to just point that out now right now i'm working with tone and color so i can just click here and collapse this and now let's open up noise and sharpening and you're going to notice we have something new in here and that's tack sharp ai now what i really enjoy about this is generally i'm going to sharpen my image and also denoise the image so they added this both button here so click on both and you could denoise and sharpen all at the same time now it'll zoom your image into a hundred percent so you could really examine it and i put that red arrow there so you could see the progress bar it takes a second or two to analyze the image and then you have this before after then you could drag this to the right or left just to analyze the result you got but notice how much sharper that has gotten now, I find sometimes this gets too sharp, and I'll show you how to take care of that. But I want you to also notice when you're doing the sharpening and denoising, you don't see any of the adjustments you made when you made the tone of color. Just to point that out. If you think, hey, why did my image all of a sudden get dark? That's because it's disregarding the tone and color adjustment. I don't know why they do that, but there must be a reason. This Tack Sharp AID Blur defaults at 100%, which for most cases is way too strong. You see how crunchy this gets in here? Let me kind of zoom in and you can see it. Like here's the before and here's the after. It really sharpens it up, but it's really crunchy. Go ahead and grab that adjustment and start to move it to the left till it looks just the way you would like it. And I find you need to do that, but it defaults at 100%. Then you have this micro sharpening, which deals with the micro areas of sharpening. But I find the deep blur really does the job for you. You can see how noisy it's starting to pull in some noise right there. But I find the default setting here is pretty good. I've seen some other videos where people were saying, just pull back in the micro sharpening. I don't find that to be that effective. I find the default settings pretty good with that. And then you could adjust that to however you like it. But I find that the Tack Sharp AI Deep Blur needs to be pulled back a little bit. Here's the before, and now here is the after. And now that looks much better. Once you're satisfied with your adjustments, click Apply, and that will apply that. And then you can go on with your editing from there. To get back to the library, you could click Browse or use the shortcut G to get you back there. I like to work with shortcuts. And next up, we're going to take a look at the new Mask AI technology in Photo Raw 2023. Right now, the world is being taken over by artificial intelligence, but it can be very helpful with photo editing apps. To demonstrate Mask AI, let's work in this horse. I'm just gonna double click it and open this horse image up. Now pay attention to the tool well over here. You're gonna notice a new tool in here called Super. If you hover over that, we find out this tool is called Super Select AI. And the shortcut is K, and you notice we get a shortcut right here as well. So that's kind of nice. So if you type your K key on your keyboard, you'll open up the super tool. And let's just do that. I'm just gonna type K and you notice it selects that. Now, if we hover over different parts of the image, different things will get selected. And when you wanna actually select something, just click on it. Click on it again and you'll deselect it. But you'll notice we have two modes. We have paint in and paint out. So I'm gonna leave it on paint in because we're gonna use a paint in type adjustment. So let me say I wanna darken up this foreground here. So I'm gonna click on this. And now, here's a shortcut. If you right click, you'll notice we have some things we can do with the selection. We can do basic adjustments, and that's the same as the local adjustment over here. And then we have our different uh, filter effects that we can do. Now, I wanna use a filter effect, and what I wanna do is use a glow filter, and I wanna use a dark glow. 
just to darken up this ground. And you'll notice it missed the little area right there. So these masks aren't perfect. Now, if you want to look at your mask, you can click on the mask icon here and click on view, or the shortcut for that is O. You can also change the way the mask looks by coming up here to mask and go to view mode. And let's view this as a red overlay. So you can see it's missed this area right here. These masks are not perfect, but the way I like to say this is it's a good starting point. So I can just erase this area out. Right now, my brush is set with a feather of 100%, opacity of 100%, flow of 100%, and also the size is at 125. You can use your left and right bracket keys to adjust the size. I like to use shortcuts. Right now, I'll be painting out. You see the little minus on there? If you hold your Option or Alt key down, you can paint in. That becomes a plus. I'll hold down my Option key and paint in this area, and that way, I'll be painting this area in. Okay. I'm not going to go into real detailed making adjustments because this area is missed here, but you get the point. This is just the first look, right? And now if we type O again, we can see our image back. This little missed area right here is gonna bother me. So I'm gonna hold my Alter Option key down and paint this area in just because it's kind of annoying. And there we go. And now we could come over here to the glow filter and we could do different things to it. You know, right now I'm set with a darker preset. You got a bunch of different presets in here. When you hover over presets, you can see the effect that that preset will give you. But I'm using the darker preset. Now I could take that amount and pull that amount back. It's just adding a nice little soft glow and it darkens it. Okay, so here is my before and you can click right here. Here's the before the glow and here is after the glow. So that does a really nice job. If you want to see an overall before and after, you can just click preview and see the original, click it again and it comes back or else you could use the shortcut of the backslash key to see the before and after as well. Let's try another adjustment. I'm going to type my K key and now I have super select AI working again. Let's work on the horse. Let me click on the horse and it's set to paint in. And I'm going to right click and again, adjustments deal with this local over here. So if I hover over any of these adjustments in here, for instance, like if I wanted to increase the exposure on the horse, just hover over that. You can see the effect that you're going to get, but you have all these different adjustments in here and you just hover over them and you'll see the effect. But I want to use a filter and I want to use the dynamic contrast filter under Surreal just so you can really see what's happening here. Okay, you see all that detail that's brought out in the horse. Now, I think that's way too much. So I'm going to take this small amount on dynamic contrast and pull this back a little bit to maybe right around there. I think that looks pretty good. Here is the before and here is the after. Now take notice, we're still using the Super Select AI tool. When you're done using that tool, all you have to do is click done, but we could add another adjustment. Say if I wanted to do something with the sky, I could hover over the sky and select it. Right now, I'm just gonna deselect it by clicking on it again and clicking done, because I'm gonna show you another way you could work with filters and local adjustments. And that is this, say we wanna blur that sky out a little bit. What we could do is come over here Make sure you're in effects and click add filter. And then notice over here, apply with mask too. And we have a choices here, like to none, to all, natural ground. And when you hover over these, you can see where they're getting selected, like sky and animal. So let's click on sky right here. And now we have to choose what we want to use. So I want to use a lens blur. I'll just click lens blur. And in a sec here, you'll see, there it is. There's my sky all blurred out and there's my mask. Again, it's not perfect. Let's take a look at the mask. So let me click on the mask and click view. And you can see it missed this area right here of the sky. And it's blurring out the horse's ears a little bit here. And also down here at the bottom, it's not perfect down here. So we would have to fix things. It isn't perfect. You know, AI isn't quite there yet. And I'm sure on one will improve this as they go on and train their AI. But we're in the beginning stages of this AI development. I'm going to type O to get rid of the mask view. And we can see our skies blurred out. Let me uh, pull back on the amount a little bit to make it look a little bit more realistic. So something like that looks good. Mask AI let me down on the horizon line here. I'd have to fix that. And also the horse's ears are a little bit blurry. So there's some issues 
here that I would have to use brushing tools to correct that. But there's a lot of great brushing tools inside of On One Photo Raw. There always has been. This is not that tutorial today. I'm just showing you some of the new features. So we're going to move on to another image. But Mask AI is not perfect. Would ever be perfect? I don't know. But just know this. You will need to do some repair work. So bear that in mind. I'll use the shortcut G to get us back to the library module. The last thing I want to show you is the new adaptive presets. Now they're really nice and you can even make your own adaptive presets. I might take a whole video and show you how that works, but let's work with the ones they give us for now. Let's work in this architecture picture. Let me double click it. Right now we don't see our preset list, but if you come to the lower left corner and click this icon, there's your presets and up at the top is our AI adaptive presets. So let me click on this and let me show you how this works. We have one called architecture, one called burden, wildlife, food, landscape, outdoor portraits, planes and cars, studio, and sky. Let's try architecture because I have this building. So let me click on this. And inside here, we're gonna see a bunch of different presets. And the cool thing is if you hover over these different ones, you'll see the effect take place. So you'll get an idea of what kind of a uh, look you're gonna get. And I think I wanna use this one called Dramatic New Sky Black and White. So let me hover over this and see the results. So that looks pretty cool. Then to accept that, just click on that preset and that accepts it. Now let's come over to the right pane over here and click on effects. And we can see here that we have a black and white filter giving us the black and white image and one called architecture, which is a dynamic contrast filter that has been renamed. You just double click on the name of the filter and you can rename it. And let's click on sky and you see that a mask has been built for us. And then you can choose any of these other uh, skies that you would like, but I'm just gonna leave the one that it's given us here because this tutorial is getting kind of long. So, but we could change out the sky by just clicking on another sky, no big deal. Sky Swap AI comes with a bunch of different adjustments to really hone that sky in to make it look really natural. Like shift horizon, we can adjust opacity, fade the edge, shift the edge change the appearance, blur the background, add a reflection to an image that has water, and you could reflect the sky into the water. But for me, the adaptive presets are really about getting you close to a finished product, but there's still work you have to do. Believe me, it's not a magic click this button and you're done. Because let's look at that sky one more time, and let's view it as a black and white mask. So let me click on grayscale, but look, it's it added these windows in here. Now we may want this because we may want some of that sky reflected into these windows. Uh, let's go ahead and view this again. And that does look pretty good and I would probably accept that. But there's a little bit of a halo around here I'd have to fix. There's a little bit of a cloud showing through from the original sky. So if I shut this off, look right here. You can see that's a jet streak from, uh, from the previous sky. We'd have to fix that up, but it's close, but there's still work for us to do. Instead of typing G, I'm going to click on this browse icon and go back to the library. And I have one more adaptive preset to show you. So let's click on this portrait image or double click it, open it up. We're still in architecture, so let me go backwards and let's go down here to studio portraits. I wanna show you this. You can add like a nice textured background to a studio portrait. You can blur a background, add a concrete background, do different things. And again, as you hover over these, you can see the effect that takes place. Let's go to this one, it's called rust background. So let's click on it. Now this opens up the uh, texture effects filter so let me click on effects and you can see that all it's done is added a textures filter but you have your choice of any of the effects and if you hover through the effects you can see the effect that you'll get on your image let's see if we have one here that we really like now that one's not too bad let's try that grunge vignette dark and we could take the opacity and pull back on this opacity like this and we can add that effect now it's added it to this chair right here. So, I mean, it's not bad, and I think we could get away with that. But if you didn't want that there, you would have to, like, click on your mask and, you know, view your mask. And we'd have to take care of that. You know, we could come up here to mask and click on view mode and go to red overlay. And we could see we'd have to paint this off. Okay, so we only want to add that texture to everything but any foreground element like the folks here and this chair that they're sitting on. 
So we could take care of that if we needed to. Let me go ahead and type zero. But I think on here, I think it's okay. I think it blends in okay. Let's take a look at the before and after. Let's do something different. Come down to this menu bar down here and click right here. And then we could take this slider and move it across. See, there's the before and there's the after. So there's different ways of doing before and after. Click this again and that line goes away. And look, it's missed an area in here, so I definitely have to fix that too. So is AI perfect? No, but what is adaptive about adaptive presets? And to me, it's the masking. That's what's making them adaptive. And you can create your own presets, but that will be saved for another video. Well, there it is, everyone. That was on one Photo Raw 2023, a first look. I tried to cover a lot of the highlights to this new piece of software, what was most interesting, at least to me, and I hope to you as well. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. You'll get notified each time I upload a new tutorial. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing!